Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. I'm going to turn the screen over to Dr. Taylor now, and you should be able to advance the slides. Oh, it keeps bouncing back. Come on. There you go. You need to unmute yourself, Dr. Taylor. Got it. There Thank you, you so go. Much, now Stephanie. we can hear you. And, um, very exciting to see the work that Dr. Williams has put together with that amazing team of scientists around the country. And I will make a shout out that veterans contribute to a lot of research without realizing that there is a, a huge amount of, of data that's available. And um, as Dr. Meeks does work with and I do work with, there's a lot of clinical uh, material that we can that we can leverage in a really remarkable way, and so veterans should be very proud of participating in this healthcare system that is making such a difference to clinical medicine, cancer care, bladder cancer. Um, it's really amazing. Um, so, as Dr. Williams said, um, the bladder cancer rates in the VA system are different than the United States population. And in that same um, registry paper from 2010 that he included, uh, when you combine the invasive cases and the non-invasive cases, bladder cancer actually adds up to 6% of all new cancer cases in 2010 in uh, male veterans. So it's only number three behind lung and prostate cancer. So although it looks like a small number nationwide, it's actually a very significant player on the, on the new cancer cases in the VA system. And we know that the factors, as we've discussed, include smoking and the occupational and environmental exposures, and veterans are particularly exposed to some unique um, types of environments, including in the burn pits, as we mentioned at the very beginning, um, and some other very specific work-related environments that have uh, un undefined and unknown risks. Agent Orange is one of these that has not been fully elucidated, but um, there is this suggestion uh, that it could be associated. It's confounded, of course, by the rates of smoking in the veterans, but um, it's a very significant risk. And uh, as many of you may be experiencing, it's, it's contributing to your, to your dealings in the VA system right now for your care. So uh, on that note of smoking, however, the VA is unique because there's a nationwide system and every local VA has programs available. Our VA prior to the pandemic had workshops uh, twice a month in person in our clinic and now they're doing some of those virtually. But the VA system nationally provides some outreach, provides some resources, a really uh, impressive uh, electronic text-based system that lets uh, veterans connect to other veterans and other advocates and coaches to help them try to keep um, that habit at bay. And all of the smoking cessation medical tools that we can prescribe are readily available. Any clinician in the VA system can prescribe the basics. And at least in our um, electronic medical record, it's almost a, it's a quick set. So it's an order set that you can very easily go in and click one, two, three and prescribe. And so uh, it is a uh, really a mandatory part of counseling for a new diagnosis of bladder cancer. But it's a very important conversation to be having long before veterans ever get to the point to be diagnosed with bladder cancer, because we do know veterans are still smoking at very significant rates, even compared to the non-veteran population. So I put this, this uh, note in here because it's a really critical part of even surviving your bladder cancer. If you can quit after your diagnosis, that does improve survival as well. Some of the needs in care are universal. So these do not apply specifically only to veterans, but uh, the needs that are specific to bladder cancer are getting information about the diagnosis and treatment options at the time of diagnosis, and then getting access to all the care that you need. Um, once you've received definitive treatment or initial treatment, then you can be labeled a bladder cancer survivor. And so survivorship is a larger body of care after definitive treatment of cancer. And uh, in my case, uh, with a grant sponsored by my Houston VA, I conducted interviews with veterans on their survivorship needs. 
and we developed a veteran-centered survivorship care plan. And this is being used in our regular clinical care now with plans being developed to broaden these services and provide more outreach for bladder cancer survivors. And this um, is gonna connect veterans to services that are available in the VA, whether or not uh, he or she has cancer, but they may benefit a, a person who has survived bladder cancer, such as nutrition, exercise, physical activity, um, other healthcare kind of improvement uh, of your other um, conditions. Um, but like, like we have talked about, the, just in the same way that Dr. Williams was able, able to leverage this huge national system, it's uh, important to realize there are advantages in your clinical care, too, when you're in the VA system, because it is a connected network, so all your doctors and clinicians can see all of your records and history easily, and it is also easier, I would say, uh, relative, relatively speaking, to transfer care and move and, and have your records go with you. Uh, and so the long-term care continues within the system. And so anytime a primary care provider has a question about a patient that I've treated in the past, it's as simple as an email or a note within the record. So I do think um, uh, I would emphasize it's good to be proud of the system that you're in for your care. Um, this population in the VA system has to deal with a lot of other trauma that has occurred because of your military service and mental health issues can affect your management of your cancer and coping with your cancer. Um, the intersection between the mental health issues and being positive about your cancer and having the right outlook are important. So many of the VAs in the country have a specific cancer center psychology providers and psychologists who can work uh, on that um, as well. So some of the strategies uh, for veterans with bladder cancer and survivors are to really focus on uh, getting the education that you need. Uh, Beacon has an amazing uh, set of resources online and in print uh, that will certainly help the newly diagnosed and longer, longer term survivors. But knowing your treatment plan helps make the what ifs less threatening so that you can approach your care with confidence and, ha and feel empowered. Um, lifestyle and diet modification are important to help you live healthier and maybe help your cancer not have as much effect on your day-to-day. -day. And then the support systems that you already have or that you can develop. The VA also provides a lot to veterans, including support groups and the smoking cessation as discussed. And in general, anyone facing a serious diagnosis should have opportunity to look at creating a power of attorney. And I do think the VA uh, has a lot of avenues to help connect you to that um, resource as well. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk with you and look forward to taking questions and speaking more about it. Thank you.